We will call to order the regular board meeting of the Chicago Board of Election Commissioners. Good morning. My name is Maricel Hernandez. I'm the chair. And with me is Commissioner William Cressy. Present. And Commissioner June Brown. Present. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the consideration of the agenda. Are there any proposed changes? If not, then we will proceed with the approval of the regular board meeting minutes of March 8th, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved by Commissioner Brown. Second? Is there a second? Seconded by Commissioner Cressy. Uh, properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the executive director's report, Mr. Holliday. Unmute yourself, Mr. Holliday. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, again, thank you, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. We've heard from both our ballot printers about supplies for our June election. Paper is available for June. Uh, the earliest we will start seeing paper for November will be in July. Uh, our pretrial detainee voting met with the jail and the county clerk's office. Uh, the following weekends are the anticipated weekends for voting at the jail, Saturday, June 11th, Sunday, June 12th, Saturday, June 18th, and Sunday, June 19th. Our nursing home voting, we have 91 participating homes. Of that 91, 72 would like for us to have in-person in, in voting. 19 are saying no and two are closing. So currently we are moving forward with, with those that won in person and the others we're uh, talking about vote by mail process. Uh, the second war map referendum was filed on last week. Our general counsel will give you more details, but our district and boundaries department has prepared both maps now in the process, process of proofing both maps for accuracy. On Saturday, I attended and spoke at a voter registration engagement sponsored by Paul, the Evangelists of Grace, Live Free Chicago, and Chicago Vote. Shared information on registering to vote, early voting, spoke on permanent vote by mail. Also, I left these cute these cards with the QR code on the back that once scanned with your smartphone, it directs you to our website with the different links about registering to vote, uh, early voting, and also the permanent uh, voter registration list. Our super site at 191 North Clark is secured. Uh, presently, they're working on the Havoc units, which will be done by March 25th. That work will be completed by March 25th so that we will have adequate air in there once we uh, take possession. And we have a walkthrough schedule for April 1st. Lastly, on Thursday, March 24th, 24th the Chicago Board of Election will be hosting the Spring Conference of the Association of Election Officials of Illinois. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, I will send you the link to that conference if you're available but I'll send you the link. And that's all I have. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, and now we'll hear from Ms. Espera. Good morning and thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. The sign off of the proofs for the campus mailing is scheduled to take place today. Since the last board meeting, there's been an increase of 1,000 applications for election judges, bringing the total number to 4,455 as of March 18, and the number of election coordinators to 954, an increase of 179. I have uh, taken initial steps to prepare for the setup of Election Central for the 2022 primary election. I continue to work with the HR manager in operating uh, procedures and she is getting up to speed very quickly. The 69 West Washington staff that was loaned to assist the pro with the projects at the warehouse have been reassigned as of March 16th to focus on assignments and projects in their departments. I would like uh, to thank Sean Simpson for overseeing the staff that was loaned to the warehouse. He did a great job. 
Dominion and board staff weekly meetings will start this week. And finally, the warehouse is working diligently working toward <laughs> diligently working towards finalizing inventory. And that is all I have. Okay. Thank you. Are any questions there? Yes. Uh yeah. the number of election judges and election coordinators. Um do you anticipate is this going to be a problem with the number we have currently or is uh, there a shortage and is there anything that we commissioners can do? Mrs. Spira? You said the commissioners could do or uh, I, I would Well, talk just first of all, is is how short are we on the number of judges and, and, and uh, coordinators we need? Okay. And two months out, out of the election, right, compared to other elections. So we're halfway there uh, with the both the election judges and the coordinators. So we definitely need to start thinking uh, how we can reach out to more of to more of uh, judges who can apply to be uh, judges of election for this election. How do, how does it compare to? Uh, I have, the... Honestly, I have not done the comparison to tell you the truth. I've got to compare and get back to the, all of them. Uh, Mr. Goff. What? I'm sorry for interrupting, but no. two months out, this is normal. Um, you know, the, the politicians usually wait until all the petitions are filed and everything else before they start recruiting judges. So this is more than normal. In fact, I think you're ahead of the game. As, as a point of order, too, we're three months out from election day. Two months, yeah. Mm -hmm. Three, well, March, three. Three. April, May, June. Right, three months, yeah. right. So we're we're in decent shape. Okay, great. Thank you for the institutional history, Lance. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I always gauge it by how were we in the last election, last couple of elections. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Okay. Um, uh, now we'll go to our public information director, uh, Max Fever. Max, good morning. Good morning, Chairwoman, and good morning, everybody. A few quick updates on my end, uh, working with staff here. Uh, the, our, Mrs. Spera gave a quick update on the Canvas. Uh, we're a little ahead of schedule than originally heard. Uh, the envelopes are being delivered uh, a bit more early. Uh, okay. With the final uh, proof today, uh, those should be going out this week and hitting voters ahead of uh, the timeline that we quoted last time, uh, last board meeting. Good. Um, we are we are ahead of schedule on the I voted stickers. We did get 1.6 million ordered uh, and slightly under budget too. So thank you, Opal, and uh, the purchasing <laughs> team for that. Um, but uh, thankfully, we were uh, no supply chain issues uh, noted by our vendor to get in the way of that. Right now, the team is working on next household mailing that will go uh, out after the canvas, as well as the second notice for the canvas uh, to get ahead of schedule and connect proactively with vendors, make sure we don't run into any issues there. Mm -hmm. um, over the next few months, we'll be sending out more regular press releases on election deadlines, including another one I'm working on just for another call for election judges uh, that we were just speaking about. And I look forward to uh, being a part of my first presentation for the Association of Election Commission Officials of Illinois this week. Uh, I will be giving a presentation on election communication strategies. So uh, thank you to executive staff for the invite on that today. Great. And that's it for my report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions yet? Quick question. Um, Max, I, I, uh, Charles showed us the QR code for voter registration. We got anticipate putting that out on everything we have or, you know, get that out there. We did, you know, we worked together to put together a business card uh, that's got the election dates and that QR code for our community services events and other events moving forward over the next three months. Uh, I anticipate we'll put them on flyers. I'll work with community service uh, to, to get that out in the communities uh, and that leads directly to our voter registration page where people can choose to uh, register online or many of the other options uh, to check their registration or get registered in the first place. And, and maybe a commercial with just the QR code bouncing around like the Super Bowl ad. <laughs> I was thinking about that, but that was quite the budget on that. But we did, uh, yeah. <laughs> we did proactively get, uh, buy digital advertising and we'll have some more uh, ahead of this election. So on websites like SunTimes, Block Club Chicago, Chicago Reader, 
uh, many of our minority publications, uh, we will have digital ads and uh, that will lead directly as a voter registration and check your registration and district reminder for people. Uh, so I'll report more on, on that strategy in the next few months. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Excuse now, me. Oh, Madam yes. Chair, yes. Quick, I'd like to make a quick comment. I'd like to thank Charles for attending uh, Cole's first voter registration drive. There are going to be very many, many more, but he did an excellent job. And on behalf of Cole, I want to thank him. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Um, now we'll proceed to old business infrastructure projects and changes in election administration, electronic poll books, and generally voting equipment. Anything on um, that needs to be updated there? Nothing, Madam Chair. Okay. And Mr. Lasker, how about legislation? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, no real developments, still waiting on an elections uh, omnibus bill to, to drop. So we're just um, continuing to stay in touch with the state board's legislative uh, office on that and launching the general assembly. Um, okay. Mr. Holiday, yeah, so I'll, you know, the, the session runs through April 8th. So we do have, I believe, uh, actually that's after our next board meeting. But of course, if anything happens in the interim, I'll, I'll reach out uh, to you. Um, offline and then Mr. Holiday mentioned that there was last week a second uh, ward redistricting referendum uh, ordinance and petition filed in the office of the city clerk. Mm -hmm. the city clerk the next day forwarded that. Uh, well, they gave us a copy of the petition along with their ballot certification certifying that petition to us for a referendum. In June at the primary, so that's the second one. I've worked with the uh, ballot department in here at the board. Uh, on how they're going to set that up and paginate it for the ballots, uh, similar to the last time this happened, which was that 1992. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of the things we've discussed legally is that we're this is actually one referendum that has two options for for the choice. Not unlike most referenda that have a yes or a no, uh, this is a vote for one referendum that presently has two choices, and you vote for one of the two. So it will be under one heading on the on the ballot. Um, there were 15 older persons who signed the first petition. That was the uh, Latino Caucus petition. The second petition came in, I believe, with 31 signatures. Um, I've seen the number 35 out in the, the media, but I think it actually had 31 signatures on it. So that means 46 aldermen, elder alders, have uh, signed on to petitions, and the law does say that uh, you can only sign one, and it has to be signed by at least 10. One, one, Tenth of the uh, city council, excuse me, one fifth. Um, so there should, it, it's um, from a plain language reading of the statutes, we should not be expecting to receive any more stat, uh, petitions. There has been talk in the media about Hispanic caucus wanting to amend their petition, um, but uh, I've heard from the attorneys at the clerk's office. They asked us what we we think, and we don't have an official opinion. But the statutes seem to say you can only sign one of these petitions. So I think that's. Probably what we're prepared for then is these two referenda questions. The only contingency now uh, is that the city council does still have lawful authority to pass its own ordinance. I have not heard any talk about that being proposed at the moment, um, particularly because 46 of the 50 alder persons have already signed on to petitions. They could all go vote as a, as a city council to pass an ordinance. But at this point, that's the only action I believe that could take place to change anything. Otherwise, we're we're certainly moving forward with ballot preparation for this one referendum, having the two options and the vote for one uh, choice. And that's my legislative report. Thank you. Uh, question. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Crest. Uh, yeah, uh, Adam, the, uh, with the ballot department uh, dealing with them, uh, is this referendum gonna push us to a two sheet ballot or we're still gonna be able to keep it on one? So that is something we've been looking at and, and they've already done some mock-ups that, that, uh, that did not include the question based on the number of contests we have for candidate offices. It looks like in most wards, there will be room, or actually I should say, it looks like in all wards, there will be room for this referendum on the ballot. However, we're still within the time frame where um, the county board could authorize countywide referenda that would appear on our ballots. The Chicago City Council could authorize other referenda that would appear in the ballots. There still is within time frame for local option referenda petitions and just general 
uh, local petitions for referenda filed either at the ward or precinct level. So there's there it, right now it's looking good. If it does get bumped, it's only going to be because of uh, either a large countywide or large citywide uh, referendum, which we haven't heard any word about. But that's the only possibility at this point. Okay, thank you, Adam. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we'll proceed to new business, and the first item is. Uh, an emergency procurement for canvas printing and mail services. Um, is this Opal? Yes. Good morning, okay. Mr. Commissioners. Um, I have an ask today that we approve an emergency purchase with Johnson and Quinn for the canvas mailing. Uh, Johnson and Quinn will provide the inserts for the mailing. This is the same mailing that uh, Max and Sandra gave you an update on. Um, that would be 1.6 million approximately letters uh, for Johnson and Quinn to print and to mail for us. This includes the vote by mail application and the option to join the permanent um, vote by mail roster. Along with this ask is an approve to approve another emergency purchase with federal envelope. They're a vendor who uh, we had to source because uh, there were no other vendors that could provide within the time frame that we needed the quantity of envelopes that we needed. They're going to provide 1.6 million out, out, outer envelopes to mail the letters out and then 1.6 million inner envelopes to return. With that, I want you to know that I did perform an invitation to bid. So the procurement process did go underway. Unfortunately, because of just the timing, um, the quantities, there were um, quite a few no bids that came back. There were five no bids saying that they just could not, could not meet our demands. And there was one bid with Johnson and Quinn who said we could print these 1.6 million letters for you. However, we cannot provide the envelopes for you. So that's where a federal envelope came in. And um, with that, as Max said, we're on schedule. We're a little ahead of schedule. I'd like to um, just let you know, Madam Chair, you expressed your concern at the last board meeting and the team took your comments to heart. And we've been working with these, these uh, vendors diligently trying to compress this timeline as much as we can to stay on track. And they are being very accommodating and working with us and understand the importance of this project. So just want to make okay. sure um, you know that we're planning ahead for any other large mailings coming up. Right. So that this project is already underway. They actually began March 3rd, and we expect for them to um, wrap up sometime before the April 15th original deadline. Okay. Uh, the, the proposed amounts for Johnson and Quinn is a not to exceed of $105,112.46. For federal envelopes are not to exceed of $190,885.52. For a total amount not to exceed $295,997.98. That is the ask for approval today, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. And I know it's, uh, I appreciate um, the time within which you, you did all of this, um, but for the November election, Let's uh, jump on it um, as soon as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. and we're working with vendors now to see if, if, in fact, we can order supplies and envelopes and whatever we need for November. So, mm -hmm. where that we can do that, and the uh, budget is allowing that, we are we're we're getting ahead of schedule on that. Okay, great. So thank you. Again. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, uh, Opal. Um, as far as the uh, the getting these in the mail, are we going to be doing it in a rolling format? And if so, when do we uh, anticipate the first uh, mailer mailings going out? Well, I do know, and Max, um, please jump in if you can. I do know that some of the envelopes have already been dropped over at the um, facility for Johnson and Quinn. They have a portion of those envelopes already, so I believe they were waiting for some final. Uh, artwork or proofing from us to start printing those letters to begin to insert. But I've asked them 
as quickly as they can get them out and start mailing to do that. Um, they'll just wait till everything's done. So uh, they said is they, they will accommodate us on that schedule as well. So it will be a rolling schedule from what I understand. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Yeah, to my understanding, uh, the mailings will start this week uh, and be a rollout schedule. Uh, like I said, ahead of April 15th as a drop down deadline. But before then, and I, I will make a special note, this will likely be the last time the canvas goes out in this way that includes a vote by mail application, uh, as well as an invitation to join the permanent vote by mail roster list. Um, part of that was the extra complications with this order. Uh, it could have been done in a way without those envelopes, except with with these requirements and it was still the, the best way to reach as many voters possible with that permanent roster question um, as required by the statute. Um, so likely in future years will we'll be much more simplified uh, and not require uh, this amount of envelopes uh, moving forward. And a second question, Opal, the, the request for federal envelope, is this uh, an amount that's uh, much above what we had budgeted or anticipated for envelopes? What we're seeing just because of the, the increase in supplies and, and the demands on the supply chain, we are seeing about a 30% increase across the board on most anything. So, yes, the envelopes are about 30% more than what we spent last year. But, but that is, that's what I'm seeing with, with pretty much everything right now. As, as, as they unusual. say, it is what it is. Okay. So luckily, well. we, have the, we have the money in the budget. Um, for this project, and we are not over budget on this one. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any Madam Chair, questions? Yeah. Adam has a finger up. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioner Cressy. Uh, just as a point of order, Ms. Walls has received purchase orders on these emergency bid procurements. Uh, the request here is for authorization from the board for Mr. Holiday and Ms. Walls to proceed in furtherance of these agreements reached with the. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, if there are no further questions, is there a, a motion to authorize the board's executive director and procurement officer to take all necessary actions in furtherance of the negotiated agreements with federal envelope company for canvas envelope supplies with a cost not to exceed $190,885.52 and with Johnson and Quinn for canvas printing and mailing services with a cost not to exceed $105,112.46 relating to the board's 2022 voter canvas mailings. So moved by Commissioner Cressy. Seconded by Commissioner Brown. Thank you. Motion and approved, uh, uh, made and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. The next uh, um, item on the agenda is a uh, uh, bid award uh, to Veritex Legal Solutions for court reporting and transcriptions. I don't want to step on Ms. Walls' feet, but if she'd like, I'm happy to talk about this one because my office works with these uh, court reporters from time to time. Please, um, thank you. Okay, Ms. Walls did perform a full RFP for court reporting. Uh, we've worked, we did an RFP several election cycles ago and had been working with Veritex uh, as the lowest responsive and responsible, responsible bidder from that RFP. Now here for the future RFP, um, Veritex was the only uh, agency that submitted the bid. Their pricing is, uh, appears to be competitive and similar to its last agreement with us. And they did do a very good job of covering, this is mostly for electoral board hearings, which can right. you know, happens all at once. As you know, we're about to start this next week. <laughs> um, so they do a very good job of working with John Powell and others on staff here for scheduling and covering all the hearings. They are flexible and knowledgeable to be able to do some of these hearings through video conferencing, if that's the way it's going to be. That is an option uh, for this time. So uh, that's, that's the process. I'm glad that they did bid. I, I would have liked to have seen a little more competition, but frankly, as far as court reporting agencies go, not many of them have the, the bulk available to cover as many hearings as, as the board needs in a short amount. Okay. That's true. Thank you. If there are no further questions, then um, I will entertain a motion to approve a bid award and contract 
to Veritex Legal Solutions for court reporting and transcription services in relation to the 2022 and 2023 elections at the various rates and fees set forth in Veritex bid submission uh, with a term beginning March 21st, 2022 and through December 31st, 2022. So moved by Commissioner Brown. I'm sorry, pardon me, but point of order that the end date would be December 31st, 2023. I'm sorry, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Commissioner Brown has, has moved. With the noted correction, yes. <laughs> and and Commissioner Cressy also will second with the noted correction. Okay, properly voted, seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is a professional services agreement with Ronald Boyd. And this is for preparing early voting sites, receiving stations, and polling places for secure data transmission. And, and Madam Chair, also along with that is our post-election um, obvious discrepancy and a 5% retabulation that Ron works with us with as well. Okay. Okay. Anything, any uh, comments on this one? No. Okay, no. Um, if not, then is there a motion to approve a professional services agreement with Ronald Boyd for services relating to preparing secure data transmissions from various polling places and election administration locations, as well as the uh, post election uh, 5% uh, uh, retabulations um, and uh, associate, associated duties uh, with that? Uh, at the rate of $55 per hour with total compensation not to exceed $100,000 over the term of the contract, which begins April 1st, 2022 and ends March 31st, 2023. So moved by Commissioner Cressy. And seconded by Commissioner Brown. Um, moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is a, a contract, a professional services agreement with Janelle Hamilton. Um, is uh, Mr. Lasker or? I, I don't see Clint on, Madam Chair, but uh, Janelle Hamilton, uh, I believe she's a sergeant. Uh, she will supervise our election date, field supervisors and investigators. Um, you previously approved the contract for Jason Brown, but we had to come back with uh, Ms. Hamilton, who assisted him in our November of 2020 election. Okay. Is there any questions? If not, um, is there a motion to approve a professional services agreement with Janelle Hamilton as the supervisor of the board's election day field supervisors and investigators at a rate of $90 per hour? capped at 37,500 and the rate of $50 per hour for her subcontractor and, or uh, slash assistant uh, capped at $22,500 over the term of the agreement, which it will begin on March 21st, 2022 and expire on March 15, 2023. So moved by Commissioner Brown. And seconded by Commissioner Cressy. Thank you. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is uh, approval of a data sharing memorandum of understanding with the Cook County Sheriff's Office and the Office of Cook County Clerk for in person voting at the jail. Um, of order, uh, Madam Chair, I think we, we skipped over. Uh, 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 D. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Approval <Yes>. of outside, <laughs> outside council attorney agreements for electoral board hearing officers. And uh, we have uh, included 28 um, hearing officers on our list um, to conduct uh, the uh, hearings for the board. 
um, and this is at the rate of $200 per hour uh, for a term beginning March 21st, 2022 and expiring on March 20th, 2023. Um, and of course, this is for electoral board uh, and administrative hearings. Um, is there a motion to approve? Uh, so moved by um, uh, eagle-eyed Commissioner Cressy. <laughs> is there a second? Seconded by Commissioner Brown. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner, Commissioner Brown votes aye. Motion. Thank you. Motion passes. Um, and now we go to the approval of the data sharing memorandum. Uh, with uh, the Cook County Sheriff's Office and the Office of the Cook County Clerk for in-person voting at the jail. Um, and who will speak to I, this? I, Madam Chair, thank you. I, I can speak to this. Um, the, as you know, this, there's a relatively new statutory duty that the Cook County Clerk's Office and our, our board conduct in-person voting for pretrial detainees at the Cook County Jail. Uh, part of that process does, of course, share uh, will require the three offices to share information about voter registration matters and so forth that we have to verify that the people are properly registered and so forth. Um, so this is a memorandum of understanding as to what kind of data each office needs and, and of course, uh, confirming the security of the data by all three of the agencies. So we appreciate your uh, approval. Okay, there are any questions? If not, um, is, um, is there a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding with the Cook County Sheriff's Office and the Office of the Cook County Clerk for data sharing and security in relation to in-person voting for pretrial detainees within the Cook County Jail for a one-year term beginning upon full execution by all three of the parties to the agreement? So moved by Commissioner Brown. Seconded by Commissioner Cressy. Motion approved and seconded. I, uh, all in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the third revised 2022 election calendar. Mr. Lasker. Thank you, Madam Chair. As I previously reported to you, there has been a, a court decision in the recent lawsuit of Libertarian Party versus the county clerk's office. Um, so that court order requires the county clerk's office to, to recognize the Libertarian Party as an established office uh, in the offices of Cook County Board Commissioners and Cook County Board Review Commissioners. So we have added those signature requirements as provided by the county clerk's office. So we've added them now to our to the board's election calendar. Um, secondly, I've updated, as we've heard, there's a second ward redistricting ordinance and petition that's been filed at the office of the city clerk and presented to, to the board. So that indication has been noted in the special note regarding redistricting in, in the calendar along with just a an update to the status of the prior litigation of, that was uh, challenging the redistricting of the state senate and state representative districts those cases uh, were decided in favor of the state so that those uh, districts will stand and we are no the, the cases have not been appealed so the state board of elections considers the case closed those are the uh, the revisions okay any questions if not, is there a motion to adopt the third revised edition of the board's 2022 ele election calendar with new signature requirements for the Libertarian Party in all districts of the Cook County Board of Commissioners and the Cook County Board of Review and to reflect recent changes in the status of both the prior litigation related to state redistricting and the number of Chicago Ward redistricting referendum petitions that have been certified to the board? So moved by Commissioner Cressy. Seconded by Commissioner Brown. Great. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you so much. Next item on the agenda, the legal report, Mr. Lasker. Thanks again, Madam Chair. Um, we do, of course, continue to work with all departments on several procurements and other legal guidance and counseling heading into the, the upcoming election. Um, also quite busy at the moment, preparing. We've got the uh, annual, the regular briefing session for electoral board hearing officers this afternoon, this Thursday afternoon. Uh, and also, of course, preparing for the hearings to begin on Monday, 
uh, Monday morning. We are expecting to receive the objections. Today is the filing deadline. We, none of them are filed in our office for this election cycle. They are filed either with the State Board of Elections or the County Clerk's Office. They will then forward any that are under our jurisdiction to us. Those come from the State Board of Elections for this cycle. And uh, so we'll be spending the rest of the week reviewing those and working out case assignments to the hearing officers. Those case assignments, of course, will be uh, presented to you as an electoral board sitting ex officio on Monday morning. And then we will get started with those cases that, that day. So that's, that's what's going on at the moment. And uh, that's my report. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now uh, we'll proceed with the financial reports. We have a balance sheet and voucher listing for the city of Chicago 2022 appropriation number 22-02 dated March 21st, 2022 in the amount of $1,407,022.35. Is there a motion to approve? So moved by Commissioner Brown. Seconded by Commissioner Cressy. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. And Commissioner aye. Cressy votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We also have a balance sheet and voucher listing for the County of Cook, a 2022 appropriation number 22 02, dated March 21st, 2022, in the amount of $199,658. Is there a motion? So moved by Commissioner Cressy. And seconded by Commissioner Brown. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Now uh, we are um, at public comment. Uh, Trish, do we have any requests for public comment? No, we do not have any requests for public comment. Thank you. We will. Uh, do we have a need for executive session, Ms. Uh, Mr. Lasker? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. If not, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, question, Madam Chair. The next regularly scheduled meeting will be the March 28th at 9 a.m. Is that correct? No. The April. Well, that was April. a special. Uh, the uh, the one on the twenty eighth is of the electoral board. Okay. Okay. The I'll one on it. the the next regular board uh, board of election commissioner meeting is April twelfth. April twelfth. I got it. Thank you. Okay. So no. move uh, adjournment until April twelfth. Okay. Is there a second? No. Yes, I am unmuted. Yes, there is a second. Thank you. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please state aye. Commissioner Brown votes aye. And Commissioner Cressy votes aye. And uh, Godspeed, Adam Lasker, as those uh, petition challenges <laughs> come in. See Thank you, you sir. Morning. We are adjourned. Thank you so much. Take care.